Hi, I'm Honest Jardy. Today we serviced this hot air furnace and the only problem I found was the electrodes were pitted and cracked so we changed them, put a new nozzle in, new filter at the pump and a new filter at the tank, cleaned the chimney out, vacuumed the whole chamber out and uh, she's running good again. Alright, first thing we're going to do is shut the oil tank off and we're going to change the filter and the housing there. Me personally, I like to put a, a shut off right at the filter itself. It's easier. You don't have to fool around with the tank shut off because they're prone to leak and have problems. They don't work correctly. This is a. Some of them are spring loaded. This one's just a regular shut off. But anyway. And you said always keep the tank at least half full because of right. condensation. Right? Yeah. Always keep the tank half full. You always won't have any problems, especially in the summer. Everybody needs to fill it up. The winter you're using it. Uh, the summertime you're it's damp. The tank gets filled with condensation. When that goes into the tank, it screws everything up. Get water in your get your oil. Everything starts rusting. The log lines get clogged. I tell that to the kids with the cars. Yeah, Keep kids. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I should. Uh, I can't. That's going to be what it's going to be. I forgot my little pan, Ray. We'll use your pan. How's that? Yeah. This this uh, particular furnace is serviced every year, so everything should be fairly good. People keep on them. Everything stays good. Well, that one's the filter's a little gooey. Some of them are clean. Some of them aren't. I use gum out to clean it out or 2 plus 2. 2 plus 2 I prefer, but it's hard to get and it's very expensive. Get this cheap at Walmart. I mean, it does a decent job. Just clean all the, the sludge and deep out of the filter. You don't want to put a clean filter in a dirty housing. So we clean it out with carburetor cleaner. Down, see in there, nice clean. No sludge. Dump this guy. Okay. Here's what a new felt filter looks like. Oil comes in, goes down the center, goes out to the boiler or furnace. This one has a furnace. I like to wet the uh, gasket a little bit with some oil too. And, uh, seals better. I got a little, there's a little dirt in there, but we'll wet it with it. Okay. And you get new little gaskets also. You can tell if you can tell if there's water in the tank, the bolt will start getting rusty. This one's good, so a homeowner must he's probably not lying to me where he gets oil all the time. I could catch him in a lie. <laughs> I don't want to catch you in a lie, Ray. Do I? Honest, honest Jardy, right? right. <laughs> How'd you get that name, Honest Jardy? I think some guy named Hippie did get it to me. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, the right one. And you don't have to kill it. If it drips, you tighten it up a little more. all the air out of it and then I'll have to shut this off again. Yeah, 
Well, oh, there's the oil. See the oil coming off? Yeah. Okay. So that purged that out. And you don't have to kill these either. Just back them down a little bit. We'll clean it up with some carb cleaner. Make it look pretty. I'm going to have to shut this off again because i got to work on the furnace. 0.7580 degree A. That's the new nozzle. Yes, that's 0.75 gallons per hour, and that's the angle. And A is solid, I think it's solid. A is solid. The nozzle. There's a little transformer. There's a transformer cad, and that's the cat eye. And electrodes, we'll get into that. Let me shut, shut this. Uh, I need a 716 through here. 38 or I need that. I don't tighten those up that tight. I don't know why. assembly and we'll clean it off first how many years is uh is this furnace in ray do you know, have any idea uh -oh, we getting a little crack in there we getting a little crack uh oh it's not good a little crack in there I don't know, I might have to go get a set of electrodes. Well, let me just take a good look at it. It seems to be firing okay, right, Ray? Oh, yeah, no yeah. problems with it at all. Yeah. Let me take a look at this. These are starting to get pitted. I, I don't like the way that's starting to look. Because if you get a crack in there, Ray, it won't fire. You know? Mm -hmm. You could do it without heat for a half hour, Ray? Half hour. Yeah. Right, there's a little strainer inside here. Oh, let me lock that up. There's an O-ring in there, it's creating a vacuum on me. There we go. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> Come on. There we go. And this guy's pretty dirty, see? Yeah, look how dirty that is. Yeah, you want to clean that. Let me just clean this out a little bit, Michael. pretty good in there okay, and there is an o-ring inside here I try if they're not leaking I don't change them because sometimes you have you put a new one in and you have issues and it's it wasn't leaking and I'll watch it if it leaks I'll change it but it looks in good shape so we're gonna leave that guy in there Tighten it up and once we get it running I'll watch for leaks, but usually they're good. No. 
We're going to change the electrodes. They're, they're, uh, they're cracked here and they're getting pitted. And if it cracks, it won't, it won't fire. You can see this guy's getting pitted quite a bit. This one, not so, but we'll change. We're going to change the electrodes today. That's them right there. Brand new. I mean, I noticed they wanted cash only from you. Why, why is that when you went down to get new ones? <laughs> Cash only. <laughs> they said, here comes out his Jardy cash only. <laughs> That's ready. The other guy's right out. Good. Yep. We'll put them in and we'll cut them. We'll cut them to length. They give you the rods for the uh, electrodes so you could match them up. Match them up to the, the ceramics are a little smaller on these, but these are old. These are probably originals, so we're just going to, that really doesn't affect anything there. We're just going to mark them and cut them. A little hacksaw. Yeah, just eyeball it. This is my little cutter for Johnny Bolts and... I have to get the nozzle in there to adjust them. Yeah, to adjust them. Okay, that's the new the nozzle. New nozzle. Yep. All right. Eleven, nope. And five eighths. Okay, we're good. We'll tighten that up, then I'll adjust the electrodes. Five thirty second gap, sixteenth in front, and seven sixteenths above. We're gonna adjust the electrodes now. The, the settings are right on stamped on the, the burner itself, so it says seven sixteenths above, five thirty second gap, and a sixteenth in front. So I'm gonna try to eyeball it first and then sometimes I'm I've been doing it so long, I get real lucky. And it looks like I'm spot on. 7 sixteenths above. And where's our scale at? There's the sixteenths. It's 1 sixteenth. You can see 1 sixteenth in front. And the gap. It's reading an eighth, but... It's reading an eighth, but five thirty seconds is a little bit, and those little tips will burn off in no time flat. So I do them an eighth, and I'll tighten it up, and I'll recheck them. And in a pinch, you could use a tape measure. Seven sixteenths. The gap is. It's an eighth. Like I said, it burns off, and it's a sixteenth in front. So we're good with the electrodes. Brand new. Two left hands today. Okay, we're all good there, and the electrodes are away from the right, so we don't get any arcing. Tighten the transformer down. And this looks like a fairly new transformer. Ray, did we change these recently? Not that I know. No, the owner, hey, look, one of them looks kind of new. I'd have to look at my book. They look fairly new. We might have had issues and changed them. The original ones are. I believe the pump now, so. Uh, 
This one has an oddball bleeder on the bottom. So let me just look at it, get down a little bit lower. We gotta look at it. Oh boy, that's a beauty. 50-50 <laughs> chance I went the wrong way. No switch over here. Ray, do you want to go turn the turn the uh, breaker on and then stay there and turn it off when I tell you? you? Alright, turn it off, Ray. Good. Fired right up, so hopefully I, that didn't take long to bleed that out. That's a pisser of a spot for a bleeder. All right, Ray, turn her back on. We'll see how nice she fires. Fired right up. Burning. This is a hot air furnace. So, last time we took the chimney, the flues all caved in. Michael had to patch it. I didn't even patch it, I just ripped them out, the flues. Ripped the patch out. I'll repatch it. Yeah, I'm going to vacuum it. There's some in there. Well, we're looking inside this old chimney. Last time we looked at it, all the flues crashed down in here, and we got to take them out. So he's just going to vacuum that out of there. Now we're going to go in here. We've got light up the top. Right? Yep. Okay, we're clear. A mirror would be better. There's the exhaust, and there's nothing in there. That means it's burning clean. Chamber. That's the chamber. That's not the burner tubes. I need it back on, right? Okay, a little water to no mix, more. That's good. To mix up for the around the pipe. It's pretty sealed there, but I guess it had a good catch or was it not a good catch. Perfect. <laughs> Michael asked me about transformers, so this guy here is a 24 volt transformer. It comes in 120. And it converts it to 24 volts for the controls for the thermostats and whatever there's little relays and stuff but uh the transformer on the unit itself comes in 120 but it makes it converts it to uh, 14,000 volts on this particular one so that's what a transformer does it transforms electricity into different voltage I'm gonna talk about this thing the primary control that controls yeah. all the functions of the the burner, the thermostat tells it to turn on, tells the tells the burner to come on, cycle true. If it doesn't fire the cat eye inside there, which was the, we're not going to open it up now, but the cat eye, if it doesn't read a certain amount of resistance, or resi too much resistance where it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not a good flame, it'll be uh, smoky, it, it won't pick up the resistance, it'll give you a lot of resistance, it'll shut this off. Primaries, they have a little digital readout. It'll actually tell you how to troubleshoot it. It'll tell you how many how many ohms the cat eye are reading, which is a real helpful thing because I usually have to get my or my uh, digital voltmeter out to check the cat eye. But that's a nice little feature on the newer the newer primaries. This is this is a newer one, but it has digital ones now, so they're really nice. And they actually troubleshoot it for you. It'll tell you some of the problems on them. Well, this is it for this video. Uh, best thing to do is just try to keep your tanks full, at least half full. And uh, next we're going to get into some troubleshooting when I have some issues, customers have issues. And we'll, uh, we'll try to resolve their problems. So, until next time, Honest Jardy out.